Well, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> let's get started. I'm starting off by roughly sketching the shape I want for the base on a piece of foam board. After cutting it out, I slowly and carefully bevel all the edges. Next, I took another piece of foam board and removed the paper from both sides. And with a fresh blade, I cut it into strips, making sure the foam doesn't rip or tear. Then I cut the strips into small, somewhat uniform bricks. Next, to add some texture, I tumbled the foam bricks with some rocks in a can. This didn't exactly give me the amount of texture I was looking for, but I'll fix that later. Next, using some tape, I marked out a guideline for me to follow. I then started to place the bricks one by one using hot glue, making sure to offset each row. Now that all the bricks are in place, I came back with a rock and added a much needed texture. I then took a wooden dowel and cut it into two pieces, roughly to size, not measuring anything, just eyeballing it. To make the wood look a bit better, I carved it up using the knife, making it a little less uniform and giving it more interest. Just as a note, you can and probably should use PVA glue instead. I'm just using hot glue because I'm on a time crunch and I'm super impatient. Next, I took a much smaller wooden dowel and cut it into pieces to add some details to the build. Again, not measuring anything because apparently measuring is against my religion. Now for the roof. I took some construction paper and cut it into two rectangles, roughly the size I wanted the roof to be. I've decided to make a wooden roof, because making shingles just takes so long. But hey, you can go this route if you enjoy endless pain. Using the paper as a guideline, I cut the popsicle sticks to size and stuck them on both sides in rows. I also covered three of the four edges, leaving one long edge free. This part was a bit finicky, but I held up the two roof parts at an angle that I wanted them to be against the posts, hot glued them together and added in the roof cap. I was being careful not to actually glue the roof to the posts to make my life a bit easier later when painting. Next, with a bit of hot glue, I glued in a piece of twine to the center post and continued to loop it around, using super glue to seal it in place. I cut off the excess and glued it to the bottom of the well, trying to make it as tight as I can. With the extra bit of smaller dowel I have left, I wanted to add some more details to the build, and so I made roof supports. Important thing to note, I only glued them to the posts and not to the roof. Hot glue is flexible enough for me to finalize it later. Alright, now for some basing. I covered the base with PVA glue and sprinkled over some coarse dirt followed by fine sand. To seal it in, I took a brush loaded with water and dabbed it to the base, letting the water seep into the sand. Now that the sand is properly soaked, we can take some diluted PVA glue and add it to the sand. When it dries, that sand ain't going nowhere. I decided to fill the bottom of the well with hot glue to make it smooth, with no weird kinks or bumps. And now for the most super complicated and advanced painting techniques you have ever laid eyes upon. Behold, as I paint the stone with grey, and then dry brush the entire piece with khaki. I know the magnificence, it is quite overwhelming, but try to contain yourself, please. It's, it's a bit much. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. For the wood, I just diluted some brown ink and spopped it all over, letting it tint the wood instead of just paint it. I used the same ink, diluted it even more, and just added it to the stone in a random fashion, just to add some variety to it. After that, I just used the rest of it as a wash to the base. I usually prefer using inks instead of watered-down paints when it comes to washes, because they just pack a lot more punch when it comes to saturation. Next, I painted the inside of the well blue and tinted the edges with black while the paint was still wet, to make it a bit darker. For the final step, I covered all the stone with black wash, letting it seep into the cracks. Naturally, some of the wash will find its way to the base, so just use a brush loaded with water to dilute it and spread it around so it's not as strong. For the water effect, we'll take some Mod Podge glass and fill in the well. To create some ripples in the water, we're going to take a straw and blow on the Mod Podge. Now, with that out of the way, we can glue it all together. For the final touch, let's make the base a bit more interesting by adding some turf. I spread a bit of super glue randomly on the base and then proceeded to cover it up using fine turf. After that, I add a few grass tufts and we're done! And there we are! That was a pretty simple and easy piece to make, but also a lot of fun. Mm, now let's try something a bit more challenging. This time for our base, we'll go with double corrugated cardboard. We'll cut two pieces, one a bit smaller than the other, and glue them together. 
Then use hot glue on all the edges of the cardboard to fill in the gaps and create a smoother transition. For the base structure of my well, I'm using the bottom part of a Pringles uh, tube package thing. You can use really anything for this, I just wanted this well to be big enough for a 2 inch bases to fit through, so I can jump scare my party. After it's cut, you can glue it to the base. Oh, and don't forget to touch the tin where you just placed all that hot glue and burn your fingers off like an absolute freaking moron. It's a very important step. Next up, you'll need a surface you don't mind trashing, because we'll be using some dash clay. Cut yourself a solid chunk, add a bit of PVA glue and work it into the clay. The PVA makes the clay much less brittle when it dries. Spread it out to a somewhat even sheet and cut strips tall enough to cover the height of the well. The cutout strips can then be attached to your well structure, also known as sprinkles. Cover both the outside and the inside and smooth the joints with water. Now to sculpt the stones, I used some cheap sculpting tools, but you can use anything that comes to a small enough point. This part took the longest by far, but just try to focus on making interesting shapes and don't get too hung up on the details. Dust is quite workable when it dries, so we can easily fix any kinks later. Next I took a rock and gently added some texture to the stone, trying not to press too hard and ruin all that hard work. I based it with some sand and dirt, and once it was dry, I moved back to the well. Using a knife, I started cleaning up the well, cutting and beveling all the edges of the stones. Now, for the painting of this well, I took a bit of a different approach. Using a mix of green, grey, brown and a hint of blue, I wet blended it all together, trying to create as much interest and variety as I could. With the base coating done, I dry brushed with a grey, followed by a tan. Then I went back to all my base colors and heavily diluted them, using them as washes at different places. After that, I used a black wash to tie it all together. And not forgetting to clean the base from any unintentional spill. For the final layer, I just dry brushed a bit of tan to bring back some of the details. After that was done, I added a bit of turf to the base and sealed it in. To create some moss, I made a mixture of fine turf and PVA glue and smeared it along the walls of the well using a brush. For the water, I used two layers of 5 minutes epoxy. I highly recommend testing different brands before using it on your final piece. Some epoxies have the tendency to turn yellow after curing, and no one wants a piss-filled fountain. Once the epoxy is all cured, you can add the Mod Podge and create the ripples, and with that final step, we're done! This was definitely the most challenging build in the video, but I feel it's also the one that made me learn the most. Even if it's not perfect, it was a good exercise to try something new. But now, it's time for the final, and my personal favorite, build of the video. Alright, for the base, we'll start with a piece of XPS foam. After I cut it to shape, I clean up and bevel the edges. In order to give the sides a rocky texture, I scored a bunch of horizontal lines and then used the edge of the blade vertically to carve out the foam. I wanted to add some more details to the build, so I added some stairs by carving them straight into the foam like so. Next, I took another piece of foam and cut it into a cylinder shape. I then carved out the bricks, first with a knife and then with a pencil, making the lines more pronounced and finally added in some texture with a rock. Because I didn't need this well to be hollow, but I still needed to show a bit of depth, I scored the inside circle with the knife and carved out the extra foam. I glued the well to the base using PVA glue and used toothpicks to hold it firmly in place and allow me to continue working without having the weight of the glue to dry. I then used a toothpick to poke holes in a circle around the well, about one inch apart from each other. After that, I based it with some sand and dirt, and it was ready for painting. For the base coat, I mixed Mod Podge matte with a sandstone color and covered all the rock surfaces. I then used a lighter tan to differentiate the ground from the rocks. When it was dry, I used burnt umber ink to wash the rocks, and a diluted version to wash the earth. Now, look at this. It looks pretty good, right? It would be a shame if I decided to, mm, I don't know, dry brush it all and ruin all that nice vibrant color, right? <sighs> Take it from me, don't work on auto. You don't gotta dry rush everything, and sometimes a simple paint plan is just better. But nonetheless, it's done, so let's try to fix this and bring back some color. Using a mix of different brown washes, I randomly washed the rock surfaces, letting the washes mix and blend on their own. And that seems to solve some of the issue. For the ground itself, I added more water to the wash and used a darker wash to differentiate some of the larger rocks. With the paint skin looking a bit better, I moved on to adding some more fun details. I took some popsicle sticks and roughed them up, adding them some wear and tear. This can be done with a knife with not much problem, but for the sake of time, I did the rest using a Dremel. 
which in turn created so much mess. Then, I roughly cut the popsicle sticks to a size where they can cover the well. To stain the wood, I used black and brown inks, heavily diluted in water, and just dunked them all in, letting them rest there for a few minutes. You've probably noticed a trend here, I don't like painting wood to look like wood. I rather let the wood grain do the work for me. In my opinion, it just looks better. To make the well look deeper than it actually is, I quickly painted the inside black. I next glued in all the planks one by one using PVA glue. In order to give it a really ruined look, I pulled some of the planks out, snapped them, and put the broken pieces back in place. I added two more planks on top, and the leftover pieces to the side of the well, just to add a bit more visual interest. Next I took some rectangle matchsticks and stained them the same way I did with the planks. I stuck them into the holes I previously made and gauged how much I need to trim off, then stuck them in place with some PVA glue. Next, I took some chain and with the use of super glue, attached it to all the posts, one after another. With some pliers, I cut the front chain and glued it to the earth, trying to make it look like something broke through. I used more super glue to attach all the links in the chain together so they won't move. And finally, I added a few grass tufts to finish off the build. And we're done! This was my favorite one to make out of the three, and my first time actually working with XPS foam. And I must say, I understand the hype. Sadly, it's pretty hard to come by in my country, so live and learn. I wanted to thank you very much for watching. I hope you gained something from this. If there's anything I can improve on, be sure to tell me. I am still starting out and I have no idea what I'm doing. And yeah, till next time. Bye!